Chapter 15. David. If I hadn't gotten Miney's makeover, I could have just walked right out, slipped through the door without a single person noticing. Now because of new clothes and three fewer inches of hair, I need to come up with an excuse, a lie, because I have shed my cloak of invisibility. Of course I'm following her. That's not even up for debate. There's just no way I could stay there and finish out the remaining 42 minutes of this period, starting staring mournfully at her empty chair. Also, Gabriel is sitting next to me in all his all olfactory glory, and I can't bring myself to ask about my missing notebook. It's gone. Stolen. I feel it near nearby, though, like a phantom limb. I have decided not to worry. Surely they'll read the first page, realize it's not full of history or physics notes, and then give it right back. No harm, no foul. You're very wrong, David. Just in case you, the, the listener is very stupid and didn't realize that. Um, Mr. Schmidt, I need to I make a net mental note that next time I will think of my excuse before I raise my hand. He's looking at me. No, not just Mr. Schmidt, the entire class again. I need to empty my bowels. I say it out loudly with confidence, which Miney claims is the key to a good lie, sounding like you believe it yourself. There's laughter, but it holds a different quality than usual. It doesn't sound like breaking glass. It sounds like collaborative. C could be the change. Could the change be a result of my new haircut and new clothes? Nah. I may not like my classmates, but they can't be so stupid that their opinion of me could be swayed by something as inconsequential as my appearance. TMI, Mr. Schmidt says, which I know from Urban Dictionary means too much information, an expression that makes little sense to me because my defining ethos is that there's never enough information. That's how one gets smarter. Go, Mr. Drucker. Drucker. He points to the door, and though it doesn't fit my cover story, I'm a terrible liar, I throw my backpack over my shoulder and run. I find Kit in the school parking lot, standing in the middle of the road with her head back and her arms outstretched. It's snowing, she says. Can you believe it? I nod because I can believe it. Last night when I checked my NOIA Radar Pro weather app, it said there was a 72% chance of precipitation today between the hours of 1 and 5 p.m. It's 26 degrees. Uh, Fahrenheit or Celsius, David. Thank you very much. Sorry to make you skip. I just thought she doesn't finish her sentence. Just lets the word trail off into the air, sublimate it into another form, like snow to fog. I reach over and catch a flake just before it lands on her cheek. Did you know that it's not mathematically impossible for two snowflakes to be identical? They're made up of a quintillion molecules that can form in various ge ge geometries. So it's just highly improbable. A quintillion? Picture one and then adds eight zeros. Eight, Eighteen zeros, sorry. She shrugs and I don't think she pictures it. Which is too bad because the image of a quintillion just looks like a line of poetry. The point is it's totally possible. Unlikely, of course. The chances are like one in a gazillion, which is not an actual number, but an exaggerative placeholder. But you get my point. It's possible. I look at the falling snow. I wonder if any of these flakes have a twin somewhere, if they have somehow defied the odds. Here's the thing make about making a friend that I didn't understand before I started talking to Kit. They grow your world, allow for previously inconceivable possibilities. Before Kit, I never used the word lonely, though that's exactly what I was. My mind felt too tight, too populated by a single voice. I don't like excessive noise or lights or smell, which are the inevitable byproducts of human interaction. And yet, my consciousness, that which will hopefully survive my inevitable death, still longs for personal connection, just like everyone else's. It's basic physics, really. We all need an equal and opposing force. That's not, at, that's not right at all, but who's, who, who am I to tell you you can't make an analogy? Kit stares at me, and I stare back. Eye contact usually feels like an ice headache. Just too much, too fast. Sharp and unpleasant. With Kit, it feels like the first few seconds on a roller coaster. All gravitational force, no escape, pure thrill. I am nervous. I keep talking. And there's something comforting about the thought. Isn't there?
that even something crazy like that, two identical snowflakes can actually happen. I think about that sometimes when I'm upset. She flashes her perfect smile at me, which isn't perfect, not really. Her third tooth from the left is slightly chipped, but it's literally breathtaking, and so I stop talking because I don't want to activate my asthma. Everything is just so unbelievably bleep e right now, she says, even though she's still smiling. I can't begin to tell you how bleep -y. I nod. I don't know what to say to this. I want her words to match her face, or maybe to a lesser degree, vice versa. A tear escapes out of the corner of her eye, and she wipes it away, fast. But I'm going to take that as good news, the snowflake thingy, Kit says, so thank you for that. Should we walk? I ask, because I suddenly don't want to climb into a car. I want to stay outside, in this light, quiet snow. I want to stand next to Kit, watch her brace herself against the wind, hear the tiny whoosh of s whoosh, whoosh of snow as it falls onto her jacket. Yes, please, she says, and then, like it's the most natural thing in the world, like we do it all the time, she interlaces her fingers with mine. We hold hands for two minutes, in 29 seconds, but when we turn the corner into, onto Clancy Boulevard, we stop. And I wish I knew who initiated the le release. Did I get distracted by the counting and accidentally reduce my pressure, thus signaling a desire to let go? I don't know. There's a 92% chance it was a kick. I like the feeling of her hand in mine. Her fingers were longer than I would have guessed. The collective weight of a dog's paw. <laughs> I think about what it would be like to kiss her. To t all right. To touch my fingertip to her clavicle cluster that this this is very creepy to not worry about our physical boundaries i imagine it would be like splitting an atom a distillation into component parts everything's small enough to be countable everything as perfect and forever as pi i hate how pseudo math he uses pi but who cares you're quiet today kit says we haven't spoken in two minutes and 29 seconds. Too hard to talk and hold hands at the same time. That would be system overload. I was just thinking, I say. Me too. I wish I could do it less. What? Thinking. I look over and see that Kit's face is wet. From the snow, from tears, has she been crying since we left school? You're sad, I say, and it occurs to me that it is entirely possible, likely even, that I've been having the best two minutes and 29 seconds of my life while Kit has been crying. No, I was wrong. There will never be two identical snowflakes, and I will forever be out of sync with the rest of the world, except that's not cinch? Out of cinch? Let's look it up, fellas. Let's see if that's a word. Oh! I, is that an alternate? Is ah, sometimes people spell it, spell it with the H. I've never seen it spelled like that before, but I guess that's correct. Um, what was I? I look at the mini mall across the street because I don't want to see Kit's face. The mini mall is an emotion-free zone. A bagel place, a dry cleaner, the liquor mart, the knick-knack store that sells an assortment of useless items like miniature figurines and napkin holders. Why do they wrap everything up in clear cellophane and twirled ribbon? Little moments. That's what the store is called. Little moments. I hate that place almost as much as I hate Justin. My mom cheated on my dad and I just found out, Kit says, and uses both of her hands to wipe her face. How screwed up is that? I don't say anything, because I'm pretty sure her question is rhetorical. And if it's not, I wouldn't even know how to begin to measure the precise dimensions of how screwed up something is. So I stay quiet and wait for her to say more. This technique seems to work with Kit. I don't even know what to do, do you? You know? Like, what the heck am I supposed to do with that information? She asks. And this time I think she's seriously asking. But before I can answer, she goes on. It's all irrelevant now, anyway. I mean, he's dead. D-E-A-D. -E dead. Ami adios, amigo. Hasta la vista, baby. Why should it matter? 
I'm sorry I picture a Venn diagram and three circles uh, overlapping for this catch-all phrase. I'm sorry, best used one, when someone is sad, two, when someone dies, and three, when you have no idea what else to say. In this case, all three apply. In my mind, I scribble the word kit in the overlap. It probably doesn't matter, but I get all upset all the time about things that don't matter, like open loops, for instance. We cross at the light, and I let Kit lead the way. I have $33.15 on me, more than enough cash to pay for a meal for both of us in most Ma of Mapleview's $2 signs, Yelp-rated restaurants. I doubt Kit would pick $3 signs. I don't know why I'm telling you all this, she adds. I haven't even told V or Annie. We're our friends, I say it like it's no big deal, like it's the truth and has always been the truth, and also like I'm not suddenly terrified that just by uttering the words out loud that I put myself in the I will never get the opportunity to kiss Kit Lowell zone. Anyhow, I wish there was a way to fix this for you. I would undo if I could. You're sweet, she says, and smiles. In that smile is back. The one that I'm starting to realize is not a smile at all. It just resembles one in form. The snow is starting to fall harder now, in bigger geometrical formations, rendering the possibility of two matching ones infinitely more remote. You know what we need? To rip a major hole in the space-time continuum. And then we can go back in time and fix everything for you. I realize with a pang that time travel would do nothing to fix me. I'm different at the gene genetic molecular level. We'd have to alter my dad's sperm or my mother's egg, which would, in fact, undo my very existence. I don't want that. Have you asked your mom why? Why she cheated on my dad? Yeah. No. Maybe you should. Could help close the loop. You're obsessed with this loop concept. Think about the infinity sign, I say, and I wait for her to do it, to imagine it. She stops walking and assume that's what's happening. She let, she's letting me paint pictures in her mind. Picture me kissing you, I want to say. Picture that. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> you see how it just flows into itself, or even the concept of pi. It has an order and a rhythm, and doesn't end. Ever. Hmm. Mm. All right. Or the concept of pi doesn't end? You mean the decimal expansion of pi doesn't end? <laughs> Continuous flow. That's how everything should be. Closed loops. Just ask your mom why. I like your new haircut, she answers. I propose to... of nothing. And then reaches up to touch my head, I think. But then she jams her hand back into her jacket pockets. Your outsides match your insides better now. I don't know what that means, I reply. She doesn't answer me, though. Kit just stares up at the sky and let the snow bathe on her face with its infinite variation of bet. All right, that's uh, the end of chapter 15. That was a weird one. All right, that's, that's the end.